The Book of Mormon, quite possibly the most argued over religious book in modern history. Here are three facts that made me, a lifelong Mormon, realize the Book of Mormon is a made-up fantasy book. There are well over a hundred accounts from 19 separate eyewitnesses to the Book of Mormon plates. Alex, if you have to join one Christian denomination, <laughs> which do you believe has the most consistency according to the history of the church and scripture? Mormonism, of course. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Bold claims, big stakes, and 531 pages of what Latter-day Saints consider to be new lore about the ministry of Jesus Christ. Well, let's rewind. What is this book exactly? Well, in 1830, a 24-year-old farm boy named Joseph Smith published this book, which he said an angel delivered to him, that contained a record of an ancient American people. Not only that, he claimed to have translated this text, not by scholarship, but through revelation. But basically, if Smith's claims are true, this means that the Book of Mormon actually is scripture, Joseph Smith actually was a prophet, and the church that he started really is what he claimed it to be, Christ's New Testament church restored today. But if the book isn't true, this means that Joseph Smith was a false prophet, the Book of Mormon is not true, and that 17 million people are currently being spiritually catfished. Both options are pretty insane, honestly. So, is the Book of Mormon true? So I want to know if the Book of Mormon holds up. And it's 2025, what am I going to do? Read it? No. Well, at least not right now. Instead, we're going to use a Python script to help apply the test that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 7. Watch out for false prophets. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Thus, by their fruits, you will recognize them. So what this script does is go through every chapter of the Book of Mormon and look for invitations that the book is making, either directly or indirectly. And we also have the AI return a score of 1 to 10 based on how Christ-centered the text is. 1 being not Christ-centered at all, 10 being extremely Christ-centered. All of this is to help us see at large what fruits the Book of Mormon produces. But what if I'm not Christian? Well, obviously you're not going to care too much about how Christ-centered the text is. So I also programmed the AI to return two other scores. The first is simply a moral score. Regardless of what faith you proclaim or do not proclaim, the AI is going to return a score that tells us if this chapter promotes the reader to live a good moral life. Not from a strictly Christian perspective, but from a non-religious perspective. Like if a non-religious person read this book, would they come away wanting to be a better person? Or would they think that all the Latter-day Saints are part of a cult. So let's go ahead and run this script and see what it does. And so after running the script, this is what we get. For each book in the Book of Mormon, we get a score for dignity, Christ-centeredness, and moral. We also get a short summary of the invitations of the chapter, along with a rationalization for why it gave each of these scores. But this isn't very fun to look at, so let's visualize this data. Now initially what we did was make some graphs and map plot lib, but all of these are kind of lame to look at. So let's give this data to Claude and have it make visualizations for us. So these are the scores of all the books of the Book of Mormon. Let's sort this by Christ-centered school, and we'll go descending. And we see that Moroni is the highest Christ-centered book, with an average Christ-centered score of 9.7, which is almost all the way to extremely Christ-centered. The lowest is Ether at 6.5, which is still Christ-centered, but it's not as extreme as Moroni. Now you're probably wondering how this compares to the Bible, and so I have here in purple the Book of Mormon, and in green the Bible about how these scores compare. The average score for dignity of the entire Book of Mormon is 6.82, while the Bible is 6.39, 7.89 for the Book of Mormon, 5.11 for the Bible, and for moral score it's 9.03 for the Book of Mormon and 8.24 for the Bible. And then here we have just a table where we can look at all of these raw numbers. So here are some key insights that we discovered. The Book of Mormon scores higher than the Bible in all three metrics, the largest difference in the Christ-centered score. The Bible has more variability in all the metrics, indicated by the higher standard deviations in this column. Both text have high moral scores. Now you may also be wondering about the difference between the Book of Mormon, Old Testament, and New Testament. And so as we can see here, the Old Testament scores the lowest in all three categories, and the New Testament scores the highest on all three categories. It should be noted that the Book of Mormon takes place during the Old Testament times all the way to New Testament times. With all that said, none of these scores are bad. The worst score is the Christ-centered score for the Old Testament, 3.97, but that's to be expected. This is obviously a text that many people who are not Christian hold as sacred. All three books show dignified language, and also teach good moral principles. Now, as a final test, I had the AI go through all of our analysis results and simply say, according to Matthew 7, is the Book of Mormon a good fruit or is it a bad fruit? And this is what it said. The Book of Mormon shows a strong Christ-centered focus with high scores in this category. This aligns with the New Testament emphasis on Christ as the central figure. The text emphasizes virtuous living and ethical behavior. The text consistently promotes positive values.
and behaves. The Book of Mom appears to demonstrate chakras cysts that would be considered good fruit. So is this absolute proof that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God? No. First of all, this analysis was done using large language models, and large language models are trained on human bias data. And so you should never 100% blindly believe what a large language model is telling you. It can serve as a good point of reference, but for something as important as religion, you should definitely not allow a chatbot to determine what you believe or do not believe. That being said, is it kind of interesting that a book published in the 1800s still holds up to Christian and moral analysis today? I think so, yeah. And honestly, that's kind of the point. The Book of Mormon, the church, or God doesn't just ask you to believe blindly. The Book of Mormon invites you to read, reflect, and then ask if it's true. So if you're curious, maybe read a chapter. But most importantly, pray and ask God. Run it through your own lens. Even if that lens is simply, does this book teach good things? And if it does, that might be a fruit worth eating.